Today we're looking at transformer networks presented by the paper, the famous paper, Attention is All You Need. When we're looking at human languages, it's perhaps only natural to think of things as a sequential problem since we, for the most part, tend to communicate in a temporarily linear manner, speaking one word after another, and the meaning of the sentence built up and altered bit by bit with each new word spoken or read. Uh, recurrent models are explicitly designed to capture time series information on an input to use it for learning, uh, taking the latent expression of a state at t minus 1 to formulate a prediction at current time t. And this approach has so far shown strong results and has been an almost industry standard in the field of machine translation for the larger part of the 2010s. And techniques have matured uh, the paradigm by augmenting the various bits of sh and shortcomings of the traditional recurrent neural network with things like gated recurrent, neur gated recurrent units or long short term memory cells to name a couple. But a recurrent architecture by its nature doesn't offer easy parallelization since, of course, the time step t1 must always be evaluated before time step t. This poses problems when the input sequence gets long. An and another problem when the inputs to get larger is the issue of vanishing gradients, where the push towards a lower loss during training is weakened with every step of recurrence. And even with LSTMs, this is still an issue, especially when looking at long paragraphs or whole documents as an input to the model. And lastly, RNN-based models are resource-hungry in that they need a lot of parameters to encode the information that they are trying to. So researchers realize this, and so attention was devised to guide neutral network, neural networks to focus in on certain parts of the input in a non-sequential manner, as a, as a sort of shortcut that allows the network to consider words wherever they may occur in the sequence, and so far they've been extensively used to support the performance of recurrent ne neural networks. But as I said, the premise of, it, of the attention mechanism is essentially saying that the network isn't bound to look at its inputs in a strict sequence and that it's free to look around wherever it wants to, to formulate an embedding for the current input. So it's natural to ask at this point if we can do away with rec recurrence alt altogether and gain parallelism and more accuracy even in the process. So the paper, Attention is All You Need, is a landmark paper that poses and solves that exact question by introducing the transformer network. It was authored by Ashish Faswani and seven others of equal contribution and was presented at the 31st conference of the Neural Information Processing Systems in 2017. Currently tallied at over 7,500 citations, it sort of tells you the massive influence this paper had in the field of natural language processing. So the concept of machine translation is quite simple enough. We would like to take an input string of words from a source language and translate them over to an output string in the target language. Most translation models that have come so far employ this sort of architecture, with the encoder receiving an input in the source language and then learning weights that would encode the inputs in the latent space. And then finally, the decoder then works to take this latent representation and transform it into a readable output in the target language. The encoder of the transformer network is subdivided into two functional blocks take, uh, consisting of the self-attention mechanism and a feed-forward network. The feed-forward section is straightforward enough. Imagine just a few layers of neurons to learn the final latent representation. The self-attention mechanism is the interesting part here that relates the different positions of a sequence with one another and computes a representation of the input sequence for our model to work with. 
The question that self-attention tries to answer is when given a word as part of a sequence, what other word it, it, it is modifying or referring to? So we can pick a word from the sequence, it in this case, and as humans, we can intuitively tell that as part of the sentence, the cat died because it was curious, that the word is talking about the cat, since it's a pronoun for the cat. All self-attention is trying to learn is these weights of word interrelations by baking in the understanding of the word into its representation. So the proposed model materializes this understanding of a word in three learnable weight, weight vectors. For each word input, we first embed it into a vector of a fixed size, a length of 512 in the paper, and represented by four squares in this diagram. Then we take the embedding and, and matrix multiply it with each of the three matrices, whose number of rows is the size of the word embedding, and number of columns is the size of the vector of the attention component. The paper has this as 64 and is represented by three squares in the diagram. From these multiplications, we can obtain three vectors of length 64, and they're named the query, the key, and the value vectors, which don't really mean much other than as an abstraction to where they will be used in the subsequent calculations. So after obtaining the so-called query, key, and value vectors, the self-attention mechanism combines the query and key in a dot product before scaling and normalizing it in a softmax operation. The scaling operation divides the dot product of the two vectors by the square root of the length of the vectors, which is 8 in this case, but again this is a hyperparameter choice and not an intrinsic value to the algorithm, and is intended to prevent the softmax function from going into its regions with very very tiny gradients for when the dimensionality is, is increased further. And finally, the resulting scalar is multiplied to the value vector to obtain the scaled dot product attention component of the word. Of course, in practice, this, these operations are stacked on top of each other rather than working on each word individually to speed things up, obviously. Um, and so an embedding matrix of n rows and 512 columns is multiplied by the 512 by 64 weight matrix to produce the n by 64 query matrix and so on for the key value and matrices and value matrices as well. But the implementation of the attention mechanism doesn't end there, as the authors of the paper sought to expand the model's capacity to focus on different positions by introducing what's called multi-headed attention. We essentially copy the mechanism described thus far and have a number of them, which in the case of the paper is eight, have them hold distinct query key and value matrices and work simultaneously on the input. So in theory, the mechanism gives an opportunity for the model to try out sort of different projections of the input embeddings in the latent space, hopefully to improve performance. The attention matrices produced by the individual self-attention heads are then consolidated by first concatenating the matrices and then multiplying that out with a weight matrix that is jointly learned during training. Uh, this produces a matrix of a size we can safely pass on to the subsequent feedforward network portion of the encoder. And I guess the final important aspect of the model is positional encoding, since the transformer network has done away with any recurrence in its implementation. Uh, any information about the ordering of the sequence is injected back into the model by the so-called positional encodings. As to how the positional encodings are actually calculated, the vectors can either be learned or fixed. However, empirical study in the paper found very little difference between learning and their sinusoidal implementation.
And so now we can visualize the entirety of the encoder, which is a final view of everything we've discussed so far, except for one last detail of the of the residuals seen here as the arrows going around the internal modules and being added to the module output before being sent off to the next layer. The, the paper's implementation stacks the encoders sixfold with, with the output of each stage feeding directly into the next. And while the architecture is exactly the same across the entire stack, the weights within them uh, for all the components are learned separately and independently. With that out of the way, we can quickly look at the decoder whose job it is to take the target words and the encodings produced by the encoder and formulate our final output. Likewise with the encoder, the output embedding, embeddings are positionally encoded and then passed through a masked multi-headed attention mechanism this time. The masked multi-headed attention mechanism here forces the decoder to only attend to positions that have already come earlier in the output se sequence, making sure that the prediction at i only depends on the currently known inputs at up to i minus 1. The numbers are then passed through a second multi-headed attention mechanism, but this time with the outputs from the encoder side also included as its input, which allows it to focus on the appropriate places in the encoded representation. And again, as with the encoder, the decoder is also stacked multiple times to increase performance. So putting this all together, we at last have the full picture of the transformer network. The embedded vectors of the input enter the network and are positionally encoded before being passed on through each of the six layers of the encoder stack. As the final decoder outputs, it's Latent data, a final few fully connected perceptrons undertake the job of changing the representation into a, into a prediction for a, for, for a word by projecting the results onto a logic vector of the vocabulary and then extracting word probabilities via the softmax function. And at the end, we hopefully have something resembling a faithful translation. The original research went further to study the effect of varying the hyperparameters of the transformer network to see its effect on the performance. And as you can see here, increasing the number of heads increases accuracy only up to a point, given of course that we keep the number of parameters in the network pretty much constant. 8 is the default value, and we can see performance tapering off at 16 heads. And we can see a similar phenomenon here with key dimensionality and also stack height. Of course, you can view the full array of experiments and results in the original paper. Links in the description below. So it's no doubt that transformer networks have shaped the world of machine natural language processing, but this original proposition brang with it a few key problems and issues. First thing is that transformer networks involve an extremely large amount of parameters, and I'll get to that in a bit, but more parameters mean that your data set has to be equally large, and so has to be your training hardware. Another one is that transformers are limited to fixed size inputs, so, so that long inputs have to be cut and short inputs be padded. This was largely resolved by a subsequent paper which introduced the Transformer XL, which I urge you to check out if you're, if you're interested in NLP. And finally, there is some contention that recurrent networks are perfectly fine learning the deeper and longer context that transformers promise if given a comparable amount of parameters, which sort of leads to the whole discussion on GPT. Contemporary research seems to be in favor of there being an almost unbounded amount of learning capacity if enough processing power is thrown at it, and we're not really sure when things are going to slow down and show their dependency on clever, more clever, clever models. So look into generative pre-trained transformers if you haven't already. And that's been it for this paper review. Thanks for watching.